You may have lived thousands of lifetimes or been on earth for thousands of years. And in the general spiritual scene, it is said that you accumulate karma in your life, bad or good. But is this really the truth? Are you accumulating karma over thousands of years? And if so, what happens to your next life? Is your next life there to resolve or improve your old karma? And if so, how do you do that? How do you resolve karma? And that's exactly what this video is about. Hello, welcome to The Matrixes. We are Shiva and Jonathan. We are consciousness researchers, astral travelers. We deal with spiritual dissociation and how to leave the matrix. With the help of spiritual dissociation and such abilities as astral travel, lucid dreaming, hypnagogic states, we learn more about the matrix and what exists beyond it. And in today's video, we will cover the topic of karma. Yes, there is a lot of misunderstanding information in the spiritual scene, and karma is one of the big points that we are referring to today and would like to show you how to deal with karma. To what extent karma wiki exists, who evaluates bad karma or good karma and perhaps holds the soul in question, accountable and the like. That's the topic today. So to summarize, how do you free yourself from your karma? That's what we're going to discuss today. The way karma works is that this belief extends far into the past. It's impossible to say exactly until what point in time, but it looks like the belief in karma has existed for as long as the matrix has. Existed. Both were probably installed at the same time. This means that the matrix was installed and additionally a kind of karma programming for the souls that live in the matrix. Exactly, because the karma principle makes it possible to keep souls trapped in the matrix. Because of the belief in karma, the soul in question always feels compelled or driven to do better in the next life. And that's the trick. Yes, that means that as soon as your physical body gives up its spirit, as the saying goes, and the soul leaves the physical body, you then come to the intermediate level, the astral intermediate level, and there are many clinically dead people there, for example, written that you can see your whole life playing out in front of your inner eye again. And there they also see what they have done well in their lives and what was less good or even bad. What they just screwed up, yes. And because they all then become aware of what they did well and what they didn't do well, karma builds up on the basis of this, i.e. The guilt thought of saying, yes, I didn't do that well, I did, I should do it much better, I screwed it up somehow, and it needs to be made more positive somehow, and this self-blame or bad conscience. Or this guilt thought then encourages the soul to live another life. And this is how the reincarnation cycle builds up. And it's not the case that on the astral intermediate level, where you stay until you reincarnate, the spirit guides or the beings that are there come to you and say, oh, you know, the karma principle exists, not really. Come on, let's go. You can actually go to freedom now. No, they will support you in your thoughts and tell you, yes, look, maybe that wasn't quite optimal. Don't you want to do it better in the next life? 
So you also get positive feedback from the middle astral plane and balance your karma. Unfortunately, of course, in every life you lead, in every incarnation, you always build up karma. There is no other way. You always screw up something in your life. There's no way around it at all. So that means you can't even out the karma, no matter how many lives you live. You have to remember that all your past lives, whatever karma, bad karma you have built up, you want to reduce in the next life. But in the next life, it happens that you accumulate new bad karma again. In one life, you may be a very positive person, but you still accumulate a bit of karma. This reminds me a lot of the debts that states have with the bank. You actually only pay interest, and the real mountain of debt is not being reduced at all. And that's exactly how it works with karma. You can't completely eliminate karma. It's impossible. I recently heard a principle that the elite are following in their current lives. Whatever bad things they do, they immediately make up for it. For example, by founding organizations and donating a lot of money. Maybe you can do it that way for people who believe in the karma principle. They say that if I do something bad, I have to make up for it straight away and do a good thing in return. I strongly doubt whether this really has any merit, but we'll come back to that in a moment, I think. Yes, now you have to imagine it. You die, so your body gives up its spirit as mentioned, and you come to the intermediate level, fly towards the bright light, see your whole life running through your mind again, see. What good things you have done in your life and what bad things you have done? Yes, and of course you use that to judge whether your life was really good or not. Or whether it was mediocre, above average or below average. And you have to remember that you're already dead at that moment. That means there isn't a karma police waiting somehow or a karma judgment on you. They just summon you and then show you the whole mistake and then impose the sentence that you absolutely have to go back and... incriminate yourself again in order to compensate for this karma. That does not exist, because no karma police or karma court can hold you. They can't force you and they can't lock you in a prison and say, yes, he doesn't want to compensate for his karma, so go right in front of it and into this cell. That does not exist. You're actually free, you could say. You are in a state in which no one can do anything to you anymore. You can teleport, you can just fly away, you can just dissolve or whatever comes to mind. The only thing you can do is agree or reject a specific contract. The question then naturally arises, does karma really exist? And where does this karma principle come from? Actually, it can only take place in your own mindset. This means that you are taught from an early age that you did something bad and you have to make amends for it. And this has been going on for tens, hundreds of generations. And the idea of guilt has been drummed into you again and again, especially through the church. And this guilt makes you feel like you have to do something well. Everyone forgets that it's actually just a game. It's all agreements. The evil one has made an agreement with the good one who want to play it that way. There can be no karma because it is an agreement, a meeting of two souls who want to experience something together. So where does karma come from? You could only have been persuaded. And then you realize how strong your own faith is, your own mindset, your programming, that it works beyond death, that you believe in it and then go back because of it. It's all just in your head. And yes, that is the principle with which the powers want to keep us trapped here in the matrix. Yeah. 
I agree with that. You also have to remember that from a higher perspective, all lives occur at the same time. Just that, that too. That means you are now here in the 21st century. Century, at the same time you exist in a life in the Middle Ages, at the same time you exist in a life in the future, at the same time you exist in a life perhaps in Jesus' times, in a life in Roman times, and so on and so forth. All these lives exist at the same time, so you can't assume that you're accumulating karma because of your previous life. <laughs> because past life is actually just a term that is suitable for people who think temporally, who think causally. They just say, yes, in my last life I threw Franz off the cliff, and in the next life I have... to do something good for France to make up for it so that we can build inner peace. But in the life before that or in the life before that, you may have done one thing or another that wasn't good. But this life before is a temporal concept. From a higher perspective, these lives occur simultaneously. So that means there is actually no previous life and an afterlife or a life in the past, or a life in the future. You can also live in the 21st century, for example. Century, and then you will lead your next life in the Middle Ages. An example would be, one or two of you have probably had dreams, perhaps pineal glands, hypnagogic states, or have seen a life of yourself in some way, be it in the future or in the past. How is it possible to see them if they don't happen at the same time, especially the lives in the future? Yes, and I also have memories of lives in the future, of my next life, so to speak. And I also have memories of my previous and previous and previous life, in quotes, because they are all at the same time. Is that the case with you too? Yes, we both even saw the same next life. And how can that be if it isn't already happening? That doesn't mean that you then use the focus points to jump back into this life that is supposedly in the future and then relives it again. But that is a completely different topic. Yet it is happening at the same time. Otherwise, we would not have been able to see it. Correct. If you see your next life, for example, in your dreams or in hypnotic states or whenever, that doesn't mean you have to live that life. Because when you leave the physical body, you can see that the lives are simultaneous. Eventually, you don't know. And when you can see that the lives are happening at the same time, and when you realize that karma doesn't really exist, then you are also able to say to yourself, I did the best in my life, and I don't want to do it any better. I'm happy with it, no matter what you personally believe, or above all, what other entities who then stand in front of you and say, hey, listen, look at the mess you made that you explained to them too. Yes, my dear friends, I tried my best in this beautiful Matrix game. Exactly, the agreement was fulfilled. I fulfilled the agreement, I lived the incarnation, and I am satisfied with my result. I can't do it any better. And that's why I hereby end the reincarnation cycle and wish you all a nice time. Exactly. Yes, where exactly does this karma come from? Nowadays you can hold the New Age scene somewhat responsible for it, so to speak. So they tell you a lot about karma, the karma principle. If you enter karma into Google, you'll get a hundred thousand results in German-speaking countries alone. And yes, if you look behind it, you'll see that it's all New Age movement. Where did she come from again? Who initiated the New Age movement? These are the institutions with the three letters. All spiritual propaganda to lead people on the wrong track. And to keep in the reincarnation cycle, 
What was before the New Age movement? What kept people in karma? Who was before? The church is a bit outdated now, so something new was needed. But before? Yeah, right. What I know about the church is that belief in heaven and hell is propagated a lot. This means that if you have lived a good life, you will eventually go to heaven. And if your life has not been good, you will go to hell. It's actually the same principle. Same principle as with good karma and bad karma. And you can see that the churches are, of course, happy to support the belief in karma and that it should be a law because it is actually the same new reason. And even before the church, when the matrix was installed, beings, people, I would say, were assigned to ensure that people were programmed that karma existed. So the principle of karma is ancient, probably goes back much further, but we don't know it or haven't seen it ourselves. But since the matrix, we can say we have the karma principle, and for good reason, at least from the point of view of those who installed the matrix. Well, that goes back a long way. One of the first secret societies was the Brotherhood of the Serpent, and they've already done rituals, programmed people with religious ideas, and explained karma to people. So that the followers or the peoples learn to behave well, never to rebel against the system, never to rebel against the government, and above all, never to rebel against the church or similar institutions. Yes, that's right. And to keep them small and make them submissive. And you can still see that today. Today, many people still believe in karma and believe, for example, that they would do something bad if they defended themselves against an aggressor. Government, very simple example, if you don't pay your taxes, you will be punished. It's always this punishment principle or reward principle. Nothing else is karma, and it starts from a young age, continues through your entire life, with every opportunity that the government or whoever finds to make you feel bad make you feel guilty, you have to comply with the... system, otherwise you will be punished or I have no idea what. And of course you take that with you, it builds up. Even as a child you are told that if you are not always nice and well behaved, you will be punished. So you have to make it up to me. Yes, of course. This doesn't just work in 3D. Or you are taxed four, five, six times your salary, at least. And if you embezzled 50 euros, you say more evil. You're taking our money, even though they're sitting on 10 billion. So you can see the situation again. Now we have reported a thing or two about karma. Where does it come from? Does it exist? And of course, we also want to offer a solution on how to resolve your karma. So first of all, it is, of course, important to realize that karma doesn't actually exist. From my perspective, I would say that is the most important step to become aware of this in order to then get out of the karma cycle or the karma principle. Actually, you should call it a reincarnation cycle, a reincarnation karma cycle, right? And of course, you have to realize that we have been programmed to think linearly i.e. in linear time. But all lives actually happen at the same time. Therefore, no karma can be accumulated there either. How can you do something well in the next life if it's going on at the same time? And on the higher astral planes, there are no courts, no prisons, no police. There is actually anarchy there. So yes. A positive anarchy. You can't do anything to others. You can't just walk up to someone and shoot them. It doesn't work either. You can't lock him up either. He teleports away. 
So whatever you do is impossible. It's not possible to design it in such a way that you can somehow physically hurt someone else. He no longer has a physical body. The only thing that is really possible is to hold yourself personally accountable. So that means you die and come into a state of consciousness in which you see your whole life playing out again in your mind's eye and then you hold yourself responsible. And that's what actually happens, that you hold yourself accountable and then say to yourself, I did something bad and I have to make up for it in the next life. And then, of course, there is already the desire to reincarnate again. But it's not enough to think about karma or compensation or whether it exists or not until after life. This really has to happen on the 3D level. So here on Earth, you have to be very aware and clear that you are responsible for it, but you are not to blame for anything. And thus say for you, yes, that is my responsibility. But I don't necessarily have to compensate for that now, because there's nothing to compensate for. Simply because everything is an agreement between souls. Every soul is responsible for itself. You don't have to make amends with another soul, since you've agreed on it. This has to be reprogrammed at this level. This mindset has to be reprogrammed at this level. Or rather, this programming has to be dissolved. This is how you really dissolve your karma, by dropping and dissolving this very programming. If you look at it all like a list, reward, punishment principle, heaven, hell principle, bad karma, good karma principle, you can see that they all belong in the same corner. So it is a style of thinking or a mindset that works in this way and is already used in education, even with small children. Yes, I mean, well, we live in a duality, and the game wouldn't be fun without good and bad, light, dark, poor, and rich. But if you want to get out of the reincarnation cycle at some point, you have to make it clear to yourself that you have to see both sides of the coin and unite them, so to speak. So get out of duality, get out of good and bad karma. Yes, and whoever manages to overcome the duality will realize that they have lived their life well. The fact that he doesn't have to compensate for anything, that he doesn't have to repeat his life or perhaps have to live. Another life in order to balance out the karma there again is not an obligation, it is voluntary. The only person who holds themselves accountable is always themselves. There is no karma court, no karma prison, nothing like that. There is also no high court that judges whether life was good or bad. None of that. Everyone holds themselves accountable and then decides whether they want to do another incarnation or not. So you can actually say that karma is like a currency? Yes. Which is only valid on the 3D plane. Correct. Outside the matrix, you cannot do anything with the karma you have accumulated, good or bad. The karma money is then worthless. Yes, that's worthless outside of the matrix. The karma account is only available within the 3D plane or the 3D matrix is valid. This means that if I had 10 super top lives and collected 3000 karma points and got out of the matrix, I don't have any special bonus. No, then they say to you, if you want to pay for something with it, we are the fish play money. Monopoly money, right? Yes, that was the karma issue, I would say. Yeah, right. So our conclusion recognizes that karma does not exist. You have only allowed karma to be programmed into your mind and into your head. You wanted it that way, you wanted to play the karma game. Be clear, as I said, this is just programming. Turn it over, delete it. Try to solve and recognize the issue of karma within yourself so that you don't reincarnate again. You don't have to reincarnate again. 
This is voluntary. And do not think that because of your accumulated karma, you have to feel obliged to start a new incarnation. You don't need it either. It's not mandatory. It's voluntary. Always remember that. End the reincarnation cycle by realizing that karma is only valid on the 3D level and does not actually exist, but only comes into existence from the personal individual mindset. So outside the matrix fence, if you were to fly on the moon, for example, that would no longer exist. You must be aware of this. It's really only valid under the sky. Not more. Only in the Matrix game. Yes, and if you want to learn more about the Matrix, we have a wonderful online course, Get Out of the Matrix. We'll tell you everything about the Matrix, how it's structured, who created it, and, above all, how you can leave it. What experiences have you had with karma? What do you think about karma? Write it to us in the comments below. We would be happy. See you next time. See you next time. Ciao.